Napkins, napkins, napkins. They are a great additional to your craft room stash. You can use them for focal points, for pattern, for design. You can jumpstart your page with the color scheme. Their uses are many. So what you're looking at here is just a few of the newest napkins at ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link and a coupon code in the description box, so you may want to go and check that out. Now in a minute, I'm going to show you about 30 more napkins. And when I say show you, I mean I'm going to open them up so you get a great look at them. Plus, I'm going to give you ideas for ways that you can use each of the napkins. If you don't have this particular napkin, don't worry. Something I say about how I'm going to use this napkin or that napkin may resonate with you and inspire you to go look at the napkins that you have in your stash and start to create with them. So this napkin is called Viola and I absolutely love the colors. It's kind of the 2022 periwinkle color of the year a little bit in there so and it's larger scale it's as big as my hand so I am going to zoom out here and open this up as promised and you can see the beautiful blooms this one has kind of one panel down here and one panel down there so now I'm going to play with my substrates and fold the napkins. So this could go along the bottom of this 11 by 14 mixed media page. I might actually just take two of them and put that on there. And this gives me lots of room up here to add texture paste, to add pattern and design and do all that mixed media lovely stuff that we do. So if I bring out my templates here, I can see if I wanted to make my 4x4, four four, this would make some nice coasters. I have these wooden coasters that I want to get in making. And I can see, I can use this and get different versions, use the same napkin, but a different part of it. So they're the same, but different. So we talked about the post-it note, so I'm going to put on here coasters because I really love this color, bright and springy, and I can get a series of coasters on here. And then I probably would use my sentiment pack, my short and sweet sentiment pack for single words and have that on the coaster. I think that would be quite nice. So even if I'm thinking of a sentiment pack or a stencil that I know is going to go with this that I have in my stash, I might write it down. while I'm thinking of it. Then when you pull out your napkins to create, you've got something to start with. So we have the four by four. If you did, if you're doing ATCs, again, this can be just beautiful. I want to get into doing altered cards, which are very close to the ATC size. So I can see what part of this so if I've made coasters out of it, there might be little bits that I will have left over that will be perfect for ATCs, cards, or tags. This would also work quite lovely on, you know, on a mixed media card, whether it's a 5x7 or other, and you can do some painting in the background as well. So this one, you know, some napkins you're going to find a, a lot of uses for. Now this one, I would, I might, it's very pale. This one I'm thinking is going to be more of a background napkin. 
or smaller scale. It's just small. They're beautiful. They've got pansies. So again, this one might be something, oh, that looks beautiful, like on a tag or an index card. Here's for my, I do covers on mini composition books. And this gives you a picture of what you're put, going to put on there. So this one, again, you could cut out little parts or smaller scale projects. I really like that on the tag. This one could go also with a card. This called It's called Purple Wildflowers, and you've got these purple butterflies, so right away a go-together. I've got these butterfly napkins. I might add a bigger napkin or a bigger butterfly up there with this one. It's quite pale. And just as you move it around, you might say, oh, that is lovely. So we have, what I really liked was this, the tag on that. So I might add here. Now I've also written on here, there's a hydrangea here. And I have a hydrangea stamp where I build up hydrangeas. And I might just have this in the background. Cut this right down here. So it's kind of like a border on my art journal page down here and then I can do have my hydrangea elsewhere but this one I think is going primarily I think I can see it see it on smaller scale and that's what I mean match the size of the scale of the focal image to the napkin. This would make a nice card, I think, as well. Because there's lots of room for background and a bright, bright color. So I would just cut this out here, use the corner of it. Now, one of the things that I'm going to recommend is don't be afraid to take scissors to your napkin because as soon as you cut it apart and take it away from the rest of the napkin, you will be able to see how lovely it is. You'll be able to addition it on the card. So right here, I would have this at the bottom. I would cut these butterflies out I'm not going to now because they're so tiny I will lose them and I will put them here and do the background and that is going to make a beautiful card. I love the bright springtime colors of this napkin. This napkin's called Aqua Al Meadow and it comes in a larger size. This one is the, um, I believe it's five by five. Yes, and it does come in, I think, the six and a half as well. So you can get two scales of that, and that's helpful. But I love the size of this, and instantly I'm thinking this would make beautiful four by four fridge magnets using the um, magnetized canvas boards. And if you can't find the magnetized ones, you can buy just the four by fours or a different size and attach a magnetic to the back. So we can do that. But again, what I think I'm going to do, since I bought these wooden blanks, this is going to end up being a coaster. And I think it's just beautifully colored. I'm just going to decoupage that down. So not everything that I'm going to talk about is going to be making an art journal page. You can make an art journal page, a canvas, a wood panel, home decor items. You can make pretty much whatever, whatever you want. If we had it, wanted an ATC or we want an altered card, you can see again different portions of this. Now don't get fooled into the idea of that you have to use 
the napkin again as it is because I could just use this part of the napkin or I could just cut out the flour and after you peel off the things you'll just water cut the smaller elements together and then you can just decoupage them down and basically compose your own picture with what you have here. This one is a very watercolor. Let me zoom out. Watercolor. And again, we have two panels across the board. Now, I could cut just part of this, just this, and put this in the corner of a larger art journal page. And I love putting them in the corners. And then that gives me the other half and corner to do all my mixed media wonder. This one seems to be a little bit too big for my 7 by 10 so I would probably bump this up to my... This is 12, I said it's 11 by 12 by 9. It's 12 by 9. Canson Mixed Media. So that could go across the bottom and then I can put here Hello Spring, Choose Kindness, I can add a lot of texture paste and pattern in there and we've pretty much gone. There's some lavender here so I could, uh, there's a TCW lavender stencil, add some texture paste and, and go along those lines as well. The background, since this is watercolor, I may do what use um, my ink tense blocks, which are like watercolor, except they're permanent. I like working with with uh, media color mediums that are permanent when they're dry, so they don't reactivate. But I would do a watercolor effect with maybe the salt technique or the saran wrap technique. I think that might actually complement what's here. You're going to start with what th the artist has given you and use that as a jump start. You can duplicate the feel and the colors that they've used and use it to jump start your art. This napkin is called Paradise Peacock and it comes in the larger size but it also comes in the pocket tissues slightly different now we I love the color scheme here the burnt orange with that blue those are complementary colors so that works I can take you know again take my window templates so I could put that on a 4x4 four four magnet I could even just do this part. No peacock in it, really. ATC. That would work. It's a little too big for the card, but remember, you can cut it down to size. I could just use the 4x4 and put mount that in the middle of my 6x6 card. I think what I might do here is use this separately and cut here and use that part. Now one thing that I noticed with this napkin is and some napkins do this, this piece actually goes here. It extends. So I can cut out this and add it to this piece if I want it to. Or I can do this because they do match and when you're using napkins you would decoupage this down 
and then cut out this napkin and just slightly over layer it. And if you do a slight job of overpainting with gesso and um, acrylic paint, like you've seen, like I do in a lot of my videos, then you won't even see the seam and you've extended that flower. But I'm loving the colors here. This napkin, now this is not my color scheme at all. I like my pinks and purples and blues. So the warm colors, but I do love this one. I would definitely go vintage with these warm colors. Now I'm looking at this And it's pretty much, we have this pattern, and that's duplicated here, although it is cut off right here. But then look, again, I can take this and just cut that off and finish that, decoupage them together. Or when I'm over painting, I can just finish the picture, paint out that tulip to round it out. Perhaps, Put it on my 10, it'd be like an 8 by 10, 7 by 10, and play with it. Turn it around. Which orientation works best? This might work well on a card. And I don't worry there, like that part kind of looks good to me. I don't worry too much about if I cut it because I know I can always, when I glue them down, if I need another one, I can take that and layer it up. I would definitely overpaint this with my gesso and acrylic paint technique. Definitely go vintage. I might do book paper or music paper in the background and then decoupage that down. So I'm getting rid of what they have here, but I do take note of it and I can duplicate that. I've got some a lot of stamps, Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamps and different things. So it's a matter of matching and getting it to look right. And you need to play with that. So do cut them out. Don't be afraid to cut them out. And I know in these videos I, I keep stressing that. Now, you might use one or two of the bigger elements of this, and then you think, now what am I going to do? Well, you could use this, take these colors. These colors are beautiful. I could just rip this up, put this down as collage material on a master board sheet that I make 11 by 17, and add some vintage wallpaper, and then it's giving the color scheme, and I'm using it again. So, so now I have a whole series of napkins here that are similar in that they are very small scale. You can see these images, you know, were three by one, two by one, you know, um, two by three. Now they're beautiful. And this has challenged me a little bit. How do you use it? So with these ones, definitely I'm thinking, okay, this would be for, you can make ATCs or small tags, gift tags with this. But there's lots cluttering it. And if I want that wheelbarrow, for instance, I don't want the boots there. So, or if I want the baby giraffe and the mama giraffe, I don't want all this there or I don't want it where it's positioned because everything's, there's a lot on a page. So let's talk about that. And we're gonna use this one. I'll demo with this one, but we're going to do the same thing. So this one is called Big Hug. And I love the soft colors of this. And so basically you have 
a mother and child, a father and child, and they are hugging. So you've got monkeys and giraffes, hyenas, elephants, beautiful, beautiful colors. So what I would do here, and I'm going to demo with this one. I'm not going to demo with everything. There's lots of elements. Every part of this, we have the botanicals here that I love the colors. I love this. So what I'm going to do is rough cut the elements. And again, I will keep them but we're just going to separate them like that. Now we know all these elements work together. I just don't want them all over. This is kind of an, what I would call an all over pattern. So I would just cut all of these out. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and we'll get to the next part. So once you have them rough cut, I'm just going to take some water and my liner brush and I'm going to get a little bit of water. Now I'm going to decal cut them with water cut them. And what I'm going to do before I do that is remove the two plies, I want to make sure I get the two plies here, off. So you're only doing the water brush with the one top layer. Now again, the reason that you want this to be water cut or deckled is that it will blend better when you decoupage or glue it down. So all you're saving So you're getting as close to it as possible. You don't have to get exactly on it. Like the tail part, I'm going to leave some of that white. The white part of the napkin typically is going to disappear, go translucent, especially if your background is light. If your background's darker, you may still see it, but there's a way of painting that out that you'll see me doing using gesso. Now with this one, I would totally be going with watercolors in the background. And I will definitely be taking this and using this, doing a, a tutorial with this napkin. I think it's so cute. This is going to make, you can do some home baby room items, baby gift, baby card. These are little decoupage add-ons. So you can put them on some things like these galvanized buckets. I've got this one. Here's one that I've decoupaged. This was a floral napkin. And it started out like this. So if I want to do this for a baby's room or a child's room, and maybe there was the theme of, so I could paint this white in the background and decoupage glue these down however I wanted them and then I could use some of the greenery here I could decoupage elements from a different napkin if I wanted to so I I could go around I could use all the different babies and their and their parentals I could use stencils and add stenciling and modeling paste with it. But I would definitely glue these down first and then paint around the these images. So that could go on to here. Let's give you some other ideas. A door hanger. So we could have one or two or three
on there. Play with the composition. You can add others, or you will add modeling paste and stenciling and patterning onto the background. You can use those same elements if you are making a baby card. You can have two of them. Layer it up. Put in your sentiments. Could be a magnet. That's cute. So, I mean, the, you're going to have to come back to my channel and watch to see what I actually do with this. So, this one is called wedding bells and it looks like wedding wrapping paper and when I first opened this one I have to be honest I thought to myself this is just too busy I love the color so I might just put it on a background and do some gessoing and painting over top of it and 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 that was it but the closer I looked at it I thought there are parts here that I can harvest I can use as add-ons to a magnet for instance we have the bell here when you isolate it so taking your templates we have that one so if you're doing on ATC, so I would water cut these. These would be the same things. I would take and I would water cut it. Here I might even use it as is and then just add a sentiment. But what I love like the hearts here, so I would just water cut around the hearts and I would decoupage those on. Now if you're having a light background, you can decoupage it right onto the light background. If your background is darker, you're going to want to glue this down onto copy paper, white copy paper, and then cut it out. And that's going to prevent the color from the background or whatever's behind it from coming out. We have the dove. So I might cut out the dove. So there's parts here, you know, I like the, the hearts and I can totally see me using that. I like the little mini roses. This might be add-ons that I would put onto a vintage master board. So this one is called Happy Gardener. And again, it's another very busy one. And I thought I could take this and on something outside that holds my gardening tools, I could decoupage that on. So an all over pattern works for that. And I could do that with, an, with that all over pattern. I could put this, decoupage this onto a book cover, although this is reverse, right? Not everything's going the same way. And gift it to a gardener. We can also harvest the elements of this one as we've done with those other napkins because I love the wheelbarrow. So I might harvest the wheelbarrow and mix it with this pail and put it on a mini composition book to give, to gift a, um, a friend who, who loves gardening. But when you've harvested it, then you can play with the composition and I can mix two or three of these and they're all going the way that I want them to go. So that's Happy Gardener. And then we have this one, which is Garden Spirit. So again, we have smaller scale ones. But we have the roses, and I love like this urn. I love the bird with the watering can, the butterflies, the bees. All these things are harvestable, and you will be able to use them on here. Or add them to a master board, or to put on a, you know, if you're doing ATCs. So not store them. This one is called 
Garden Strawberry. And I love the colors of this one. And strawberries seem to be very in. I was just at Michael's and they had lots of strawberry themed home decor items. So you could definitely decoupage this onto galvanized buckets. Like that. You can cut out elements of it motifs. You can look at that and say, okay, I'm going to cut out that one or that one. I can see making some fridge magnets with that or coasters with the strawberry theme. The colors here are beautiful. So this one, garden strawberry, so you can harvest the pieces. You can use it to create a swoosh in the middle of something and add with the green and the red color combo. You know, a sentiment like, I love you very much. So now we have some pet ones. If you're a dog lover, this one is called Bobby. And you have four identical images. They're as big as my hand. So this, you know, could be on an art journal page. You could have lots of texture and pattern in the background. I would use sentiments from my Pet Talk sentiment pack with that. This is too big for coasters. This could be done on, you could have it for a dog lover, especially if it's a dog lover whose pet looks like this on a notebook and there's room there would still be room to put there put uh, whatever texture paste then this could be on a card I would water cut around it have a bit of a border some add some color to it in green or blue and you know use a sentiment from the pet talk and you could Part of it could go off the napkin, off the card, so you have room to put the sentiment. So that one's called Bobby. This one, another puppy dog, cute and adorable. This one is called Puppy and Ladybird. There's a little ladybug there. It's a little smaller than Bobby, but again, it could go on the card. Cute and adorable. Do some mixed media, some texture paste, or it could go on the corner. And then I would see about mixing it maybe with something else. There are some napkins that are just the ladybugs, and you could have a swath of the ladybugs going across the top or using some of that red in the background. And again, the Pet Talk sentiment pack that are, all my sentiment packs are available at Ninny's Napkins. You can check them out and you can resize those no matter what size your substrate. So we've done dogs. We have playing kittens and these are so adorable. And we, they are four identical ones. Sometimes you have, they're looking the opposite way and that's great for when you're making composition decisions because sometimes you want it more on one side. What I like here and I would take as a design idea, there's little paw prints that are stamped there. And I know that I have a paw print stamp so I might add some more of that stamping in the background. So while I might cut around here, the kittens part, I would duplicate that in whatever color scheme that I wanted. If I didn't want the pink or I wanted a little bit bolder than what we're seeing here. I love this teal color. You can also look at free printables, get some bigger balls of yarn and don't be afraid to go onto Pinterest and say cat quotes, cat yarn quotes 
and see because sometimes you find that perfect quote that works for it. This napkin is called Duck Family. Love the background yellow green colors. So I would be tempted to use this in two ways. You might use this as a focal point. I might use, and again, we have it two orientations, looking left, looking right. So I love that. This could be on a card and I might cut it down here on the card and then I would add my watercolor background or mixed media background. Let's just do that because I'm going to demo this. So you don't, again, we don't have to use it exactly as the artist gives it to us. So we have Okay, I'm just gonna right away. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I have there. That's going to fit there, so we don't need to go past this point. So we can have that. I'm gonna cut off the fence because it doesn't make sense anymore on our thing. That can go on the bottom of the card or art journal page. This could go in in here and I might cut out some of that. You play with it and I, I finalize it. I can cut out pieces from what's left here. But then I'm going to take, so I use that focal image, that part and that part. I have this green, blue, yellow. This makes great collage paper on a master board, on a background. So I would use that in that. So once I've cut these apart, I might just put this in another one of those plastic envelopes for collage papers. It's going to give you that color scheme. And if you're starting out, having a color scheme started for you, jump started for you, is great. They've done the work for you, then you can mix and match. Now there's some daffodil, beautiful daffodil napkins. I might mix it with that. I don't know where my daffodil napkin is right now, but I could do that. I might even take that basket out and just have the duck and the chicks. Yeah. I kind of like that better. So again, once you start cutting it apart, you're going to get ideas because you're not locked into what the artist has already given us. So now we're moving into some jungle themed napkins. And there's quite a few at Ninny's napkins, more than what you see here. So we have this cute, adorable napkin. And again, green isn't my go-to and sloth, but sloths are big apparently. This one's called Lazy Life. And what you see is you have pretty much four identical napkins, although they are inverted. So we have him kind of leaning this way and we have him leaning that way. So I like when the napkins do this. And FYI, in Ninny's napkins site, most of the napkins, she has a shot of it open, so you can see what you're getting. So if you want to have that option of having the two different compositions, that's going to tell you what you see. It's going to show you if it's an all over pattern, if it's cut off, if it can meld together. So now that I've opened this up, the possibility. So here's what I did here, because it's like, yeah, it's cute, but what am I going to do? I googled, I went to Pinterest and I sloth quotes. 
and I came up with lots, lots about procrastinating, one that I'm probably going to be using that says, uh, don't hurry, be happy, just hanging out. So I think, you know, this would make some very, very cute cards. Easy peasy. I've got some stencils that are like tropical foliage that I may put in and then just have the branch of the sloth. I don't know yet, but you could extra easy peasy just cut that to size and you don't even have to do very much. Add your sentiment and away you go. Every project doesn't have to have multiple layers. This one I think I might put some of the texture paste underneath it so even if I put the napkin on top you're going to have the texture of the vines and the foliage in the background. Um, this would also be super cute on a notebook. This is a notebook cover that I've taken off the coil. It can go down up here. I would put it up here and said, you know, procrastination book. Or I've gotten, you know, I've gotten so much procrastinating done today. And then I would paint out, use this, I would water cut around here, but then I would repaint the background using similar colors to that. This would make a nice wall hanging uh, in, a, in a boy's room if it, you've got that jungle theme going on, or girl's room for that matter. One thing I noticed that I did not notice before is depending on how I use this napkin, now I've got eight of these images. Like, highly unlikely I'm going to make eight of them. So, but I'm looking for parts that I can salvage and use, but I can use this in the middle, if I don't use it on this, because we're, again, we're not going to store them. So if I do what I want out of the sloth, then I can have that on an art journal page. That can be part of the background, or this can go as a piece of a master board where you're taking different pieces of it. It's going to give color, it's going to give pattern, it's going to give texture. Don't store it, use it. This one is called Rainforest and it's very much a background that you have two panels. You've got the tropical rainforest foliage. So on this you could put any kind of free printable or stamp that goes with it. If you've got a lion stamp, um, toucan, zebra, what have you. This is just going to be one element. Here we have a wood panel that's the back side of the wood panel, but you've seen me doing this. That could go back there and then you can build up and use like the, um, make them 3D kind of pop out on top of there, different zebra animals and different things. That'd be a nice child's art project. There's the background of the jungle and then you can put what other animals that they want to put looking for, you know, free printables online. Failing that and you have this in your stash, you can, the colors are great. Use it on a master board. Don't store it, use it. This colorful one is called tropical animals and I love the colors the blue the green not overly fond of this area so this might this part right here may end up ripped apart and just used for the colors and textures that it would give to a master board what I can see myself using at this stage and I'm going to get my templates. I love the bird here. So using that, using some of my uh, foliage or uh, tropical foliage in there, I can do this with the bird. If I don't want this element there, what I would do is water cut the, these out, then you do the background and you glue them 
down. So that's really cute if you wanted to do coasters. We'd have one, two, three, four. From one napkin you can do four, four coasters with those bright tropical colors. So if you've got the tropical theme going on, you want it for your outdoor patio, you can go with that. Once you've cut them out, you can also put them on cards. And again, I'm going to use the parts that I like. So I would put that on this corner and then maybe ex oh, on this corner because this gets cut off. And then you have, you can have your sentiment where the wild things are. Walk on the wild side. If you are doing a tropical jungle themed party, you have several of the napkins. You can make the, the invites with various aspects of it. So use what you like as focal images and parts that you don't like, use them in masterboards. This panda, so we have, again, we have four identical panels to this. You know, I'm thinking a sentiment, we are family, pandemonium, save our planet, something with black and white. Um, this could be a card. It doesn't really go, like each one of these, each quadrant is separate. That's too small. So this one might be a little, the, the size of this one may be a little bit difficult to figure out. So cut it apart. Challenge yourself to find some, some way of using it. So here's another napkin that I thought to myself, I will never use it. It's gray toned and we have elephants on there. Not my thing. That's not what brings me joy. But I opened it up and I thought, okay, well maybe the elephants, you know, you could cut out several elephants. They're going different ways and you can have a parade of elephants you can have you know I would water cut this one water cut this one water cut another one in there and then you'd have several elephants the other thing that I noticed that I thought okay I can use it it says life is an adventure and then I noticed and I'm going to zoom in here there's like compasses, maps, and the word life is adventure. So this part, this center part of this, with the tropical fronds in there, may be a nice background. And I could take this, take it from the other napkin, use it as it is, straight up, or I can rip it and have several. And then some colorful, you could put the panda bears in there. Or you can add the birds. Or some other napkin that you have. So if your background's really neutral, black, gray, you could put anything on there. Life is an adventure. I would just even use this part. So it could be background information, but even sitting here, I came up with, I had no idea what to use with the elephant, but I'm going to add to this 
water cut three. And I can have three elephants. I'm sure if I go on to Pinterest and Google something about elephants, I can find a quote. An elephant never forgets. This one is called, I believe, Africa. Yes. And it's another black and white. Very striking napkin. But then, okay, what are you going to do with it? Well, what I would do, I would water cut around here. I would not be using this on this one, or if I was, it would be in the background. I would go as a first layer and then other colors and gessos would go on top. So that's going to be pushed back. Then I'd have the zebras cut out and however many I use, depending on the size of the substrate, they could be there. Then you can, if you give this a coat of gel medium, change the colors of the zebras. So I'm actually really excited about this one. I don't know if there's any zebra quotes per se. But I definitely cut out I'm probably going, I'll come back and I'll water cut this. Right now I'm just getting it so that I can play with it. So instantly it looks different. So this is black and white as a focal image. You can have lots of color in the background. And Since they're different orientation, I might be able to do three or four. I can play and layer them up however I want. And then this part goes into the collage papers and I can use that on any background because even though it says Africa that if I put gesso on top of that you're not going to read the word but you're going to see the script and it's going to come through and it's going to be a lovely design element on your page. So in this shipment of Nanny's Napkins, there were tons of roses and I love florals. Roses I find are very, are difficult to overpaint. So that's going to challenge me, but there's lots of roses in all sorts of colors, muted, more pink, more rosy, red, different ones. So you're definitely going to be able to find the rose that goes with what you are wanting. Throw them all out because you might find like these two, this could be a go together. They're very much the same tone of pink. These two again could go together. Well, this one might go with that as well. And that one's the same tone. That one's a little too different, but this one, you know, it could go together. And stuff. So then what you want to do is pull them and open them up just like we do with all of them. So this one, these look like designer tissue papers. I love this one. This is called Flora Floral Vintage. I love the, the pedestal. It's going, you got two different orientations. This one right off the bat I think would make a lovely six by six card. This would also look really nice on a book page or a not a book page, a cover. 
And I love the napkins that are on white. They're really easy to decoupage because the white will disappear. You don't have to worry about gessoing it out. So I would simply water cut that around and that's beautiful, soft color. This would also, you could have that in the corner, put a butterfly, a lot of texture paste, do a vintage theme page with vintage colors. It's got some of that yellow in there. I bring out that or the green in the background and have that as more of the focal image. This one is called Ariana Vintage. And the colors of this one are very close to this. So you might be able to do something with that. It's worth putting on the post-it note so that you're aware of that. This I think would make some lovely floral coasters as well, just because I love the colors. And it doesn't, even if it's not right centered, you've got beautiful colors here. So this could be part of my menu board. This could be a background. If I'm doing a door hanger, that could be decoupage down and give me my base color. And then I can add texture paste, a sentiment, and it's easy done. These make good bookmarks. Another thing that you can do, especially when there's light backgrounds, is you take off the excess plies and glue it down onto book paper or music paper. And so you get the music paper and sentiment coming through. This one's called Love Letter and I would probably lean towards combining it maybe with vintage rose here. This might be the focal image because we really just have the corner here. This has text. I'm going to zoom in. So you can see the text and the grayscale. So that would be good to collage fodder to put on a master board or the background of a page. But as for focal images, really you have just the corner. So that might go in the corner of the wall hanging. It could go my magnet. And then you have the sentiment there. If you had texture paste back here and you create the interesting background. But you may want it just for the script because a lot of the high-end um, rice papers and that, they have script as part of it. So that would be a great addition to your master boards. This one, as I said, is called Vintage Rose. Let's just open this one up. And it's got some post stamp imagery in the background. We've got like postcards. So right away I have a stamp set that has postcards and stamps. So I would bring that out, maybe add to that um, on the page. I'd grab out my vintage stencils and use that. Here you can cut out the different roses. You can water cut them and then assemble them so you could have three or five roses across the bottom of the page. One could be there, one could be there. You could have, you know, three odd numbers seems to work well. You can, since they're all going the same way, if you, you, you can glue them down opposite, the color's a little bit muted, but you can add to that color by doing a wash with your watercolors or ink. I use Inktense blocks because it's permanent. I love the color of this one. Um, you could just use this part of a rose, 
The other thing that I thought of on a larger scale, I could you make a vase for this. You know, and it can go take time to smell the roses, a rose by any other name. That can go this way, and then you can have another one. But again, in order to figure that out, you're going to have to cut. And I know sometimes we have a hard time because we see this background detailing. You do not have to do that. I can say, oh, that looks really good. I've got stamps and stencils that I can duplicate the background. I'm going to keep that theme, but I just want the rose here. The other thing you can do with this rose is combine it with other botanical um, napkins. This one's called Are We? And you can see the colors of this. So we can build up our bouquet with foliage from another napkin or foliage from stencils. There are tons of TCW stencils that have the different foliage, even some of the um, sea themed ones. And that those colors are perfect together. So I would cut out these elements and mix and match. Flip through your napkins, however you got them stored, and get using them. So we have these two napkins. This is Grace Vintage, and this one is called, oh, they're both called Grace. So, not sure. But if you Google in ninnies, if you're doing a search, if you do roses, these will come out, rose napkins. These are ambient but we have two different colors, so if you like the red ones. Now they're kind of washed out, and if you like that vintage faded look, great. If you don't, you can do a wash, either with acrylic paints, ink tense blocks, watercolor, very lightly go over it, and that's just going to beef up the color a little bit, but you're not going to lose the color of the rose. So this one, there's a little bit more substance on the page, but I would tend to cut this one out and have a collection of three. But again, I get rid of the background, cut out the elements, and play. This one, I had the one foliage. You could also use ivy. Especially this one has kind of blue-green in it and the, both of them work together. This one is called Pastel Roses. And this is a good, this is an all-over pattern as you're going to see. But I would use this in a background to create the master board, maybe combine with this napkin, although this one's a little not quite the same. I have this Blossom Bunnies. That could be the background. The colors kind of work together. So play with it. So this one is definitely a background. You could put that on the background of a card, the background of your your board or your book, and then you put your focal image in front. So that's Pastel Roses. This one is called Music Roses and there's music on here. So right off the bat, I'm thinking collage down music papers or a stamp music stamp. There are TCW stencils that have music. I would tend to just use what's in the vase. That's what's catching my eye. These I would use for something else. 
can just cut those up. They can become elements on a masterboard. So use the focal image, the rest goes into a masterboard. Or it can go into my accidental art journal. I can break the page with whatever I'm not using. It's on the page and then that's going to jumpstart new pages. So this lovely napkin is called Mary and look at these roses. They're beautiful and look you can see the scale of them. In fact this is roughly four by four so it fits on these paper coasters. So let's just look at some possibilities. I'm going to get my window templates out. So we could have that on there. So this would be nice on a five by seven. And remember we have canvas boards that are that size. So you could do that, add some texture paste and put that down and embellish the base of that. So that would work on the five by seven. If you had like, we're going to put it on one of these mini composition books. I've got a template for that. You can fig look at what part of this might look good. Nothing's really striking with me on that one. Three by five canvas board, that doesn't really... Now here's the four by four, and I'm liking the look of this with a partial rose in the corner and the leaf on peeking out there. So I would do this. This is a co my coaster size, my wooden coaster size, my magnet size. So I would do that, add, add to it. But I'm thinking I'm going to do some combination here. Whether I'm using my 6x6 six six card or 6x6 six six, um, wood panel or canvas, I can see taking this part doing some kind of treatment on the card. I'm going to play with that idea. Make a border with my with my paints, with my mixed media techniques, and then insert this part of the napkin. Just use the template, cut that out, and then put that in the middle. So it's kind of mounted, get into that card making. I'm not a card maker um, by design or plan, but this rose is nice for the size of it. I'm not sure I would use this. Well, you could take it here and then make the rest of the page. We've got some script or lettering down here. So that is another rose page. Now, what I have is there are lots of botanical type napkins. We have this one right here that's called Arwea. This is great for adding together with other floral napkins. You can make a wreath with it. You can combine florals from different napkins, leftover pieces, as well as this. This one is another lovely one, the Ivy. And I don't have the name of that, but if you Google Ivy, I'm sure. A different na botanical napkin that you can use with some of those florals. We've got some lovely coloring. You could cut out the elements. This one's called Mariposa. So you have elements that you can water cut out and layer in, or this can be kind of an Insta background and then you put the floral on top of this. So for instance, maybe you have that and you put that on whatever size page and then the rose can be on top. And it looks like you've done the master board, right? It's, it's kind of a faux, quick and easy uh, master board. So that one's called Mariposa. But love the colors. Again, you could just rip this up, use it, to develop more of a master board. But some of these botanicals don't eliminate them because they're not necessarily focal images. This is another botanical that I could combine with 
other florals. This one is called Snowdrops, and look, I love the greens of this. This would look really nice underneath here, and I would water cut closely in here and then do a colorful background where the snowdrops show. Now these snowdrops are white, so with this one, you to keep them white and bright, and if you wanted a colorful background, what you would have to do is either water cut it and glue it down first, then do the background. So you don't really have any background underneath where you put the snowdrops. But then you're gonna to have to paint into all these spaces. Or cut it out, water, cut it out, water cut it, glue it down onto white copy paper or something. Do your background and glue it down. When you glue napkin, the first top layer of the napkin onto copy paper, you're putting a layer between. So whatever's underneath the colorful background will not come through. Alternatively, what you can do, I'm just, another idea, you're water cutting, cutting it, you do the background, you glue it down, and then we can paint the snow drops and the greenery, we can over paint it. That's a lot of information. And like I said, in my videos, I am using all these different techniques in my napkin journal, in my napkin mixed media pieces. So if this is getting you interested and you wanna know details about exactly how I do this, that's what you need to do. Go to my playlist, Napkin Journal, and watch the videos. Inside those videos, there are tips and tricks and things that you can do. You don't need to have the napkin that I have in order to use the same techniques or tricks when you're creating. A lot of my videos are very technique forward, but I love the color of this, the bright spring. And you can combine this. We've got some daffodil a pattern. We could put that in there. Now this napkin is a little different. We're getting into some, you know, real art. This is girl with pearl earring. And we've got four identical images. So I would water cut her out, get her off that dark background to some degree. And I'd use this with my Sassy Sayings sentiment pack and give her some attitude or some different things. You can paint out the colors. I can would put gesso, after I glue this down, I put gesso on here and I could change the colors of what she's wearing and play with it. You've got lots of images. If you have, you know, eight of these same images, play with it, have fun. I can change that up. I could just use the head and collage a magazine picture on there. So have fun with it. I mean, you know, this may not have been a napkin that I would particularly order that would strike me and say, oh, I'm going to do an art journal page with that. But I can see putting it on the side here and then having, you know, have her say something, you know, be beautiful. It could be anything. It could be my sassy saying sentiment pack, do a vintage background with book paper and vintage printables, get out those stamps and stencils that are very vintagey. So have fun with it. Every art journal page that you do doesn't have to be great art. Challenge yourself. I'm going to paint over this. I'm going to make a vintage background of this. The next napkin we have here is called Blowing Away and very black and white. And I can see using a colorful napkin in the background or making your own colorful napkin. I'm thinking even putting it, combining it with some of these other napkins that I've showcased in other videos.
this one. You can put this on the background and decoupage this on top. I'd get rid of as much white as I could, and then because the napkin will go translucent, you'll see the black over top. I'd also combine this. There are TCW stencils with the dandelion, onion blossom, and I'd put that with it. This would also be nice, just a coaster, black and white, or you'd have, I'd have a colorful background there. This could be made into a card. So again, it's not the straightforward type of napkin that I would use. Make a wish, just you know, that could be just a birthday one, and then you'd have Make-A-Wish stamped in there. I plan to do lots of card making uh, stencils or, or uh, card making with the napkins and show multiple ways of doing that. So the next series to the end of the video of napkins oops, that we have are from the Indigenous collection. And Ninnies carries a lot of them. So this is called Pride Feathers. And we've got this rainbow of feathers. So very simply, this could be a card where instead of having the dots here, and you can see the dots there, I might paint stripes of colors. Or I might use the stencil butters and make sway, swoops of color going up and down and then put the feathers in there. This could be a border on a card. It could be hanging down. Oh, I like that. This could be at the top swooping down and I might do a repeat so this would be I you know would have the purple one there again or they can be coming from the bottom and there's TCW stencil feathers fancy feathers four feathers there's lots of them so check them out both at Ninny's napkins and at, at T -T -T -S TCW well, that would go in there this is my seven by ten if you, oh, there we go. We could put a border with it. Ha! So the more I play with this, the more I come up with ideas. And that's what I encourage you to do. So you can do, have kind of a border that way. Or take the inspiration from this napkin. Get your feather stencil from TCW or stamp and stamp that border in different colors. So I'm going to turn off the video and write those ideas on here because, you know, I didn't have those ideas initially when I saw the, saw the video. You could put the saying, be a pop of color in a black and white world. So this is one of those, you know, stencils that sneaks up or napkins that sneak up on you because initially I thought I wasn't thinking of how much. This would also make some nice coasters. I can layer up a couple of the napkin or a couple of the feathers on there and use my dot stamps and dot stencils, you know, four of them. It would make a nice set and then you'd have, you could water cut them and for everyone change the pattern of the order of the colors that you're using. You can cut these out and use, get a, a peacock head and make the colorful plumes of the peacock with it. This gorgeous piece of art is called Sunrise Tales. And you've seen me, there was an owl that I've used multiple times. This, when you Google, when you're in Ninny's napkin site, look for the indigenous 
collection and all these napkins will come up the the artwork the colors here are exquisite so this one's called sunrise tales and it looks like I you know I might combine this with feathers we've got a little hummingbird which I may use for something else but I love the colors and I would use the purples, the oranges, the magentas on the background and these go lovely on there. So again, this one's called Sunrise. So I would cut this out and use the focal image. And this could go onto a big, a bigger page and you'd have lots of room but this would also work on my 7x10, 8x10s. That would actually, I love the 7x10, 8x10 type size here because that gives me enough to doing and then I'd have use these same colors in here. And if you wanted to, you could combine it with this napkin and this could become part of the border. Or you might just want that one, that one, that one, or st steal this idea and stamp and have the feathers in there, in that part. This would also make a nice six by six card. I'd go a little bit off on that side. So when you're doing the cards, you can do your cut water cut around the focal image and then do your own background with whatever color medium you want. Or you can just glue the whole thing down and add a sentiment. Couldn't be easier. And you have a homemade custom sentiment card. So another bear little bit smaller scale this one is you know bigger than my hand this one is quite a bit smaller and we have a baby one here this is called the matriarch love the color scheme in here you know so I'll steal that look how that blue pops against this kind of burnt sienna burnt orange color I might take this little bear and cut him out and use him three of him on a on a pattern or just the mama bear you could have the bear and use kind of a honeycomb stamp stencil and add some there's some napkins with bees that nicole sells at ninny's napkins and add those again those ideas so i'm going to add just baby The stencil from TCW that I would use that's a basic honeycomb pattern is uh, chicken wire reversed. It looks like honeycomb and you can put that underneath and just use the napkin as it is or cut out the background. This napkin, again, I'm always challenged by the napkins that are darker background but look at the color here the pattern so I'm going to grab out my templates here to see you know you can just have that this would look lovely I think so here's a four so if I do it like that, we've gotten rid of the claws or animal, but look, isn't that gorgeous? This I would totally love on a coaster right there. Just decoupage it down and look at that colorful. This would go with my teal and we've removed the claws which was a, a distractor to me i didn't like it before and i was thinking oh i could just take this element or this element I ha but what would i do with these you can also paint out this if i was putting this on a card i can alter it i know these are artwork in and themselves but i could alter it 
and paint out the the claws. This is for the composition book. I don't like that one. I like the 4x4 four four and the coaster. Let me see. As soon as I saw this, then I could see it on the coaster. So this one, I don't know if I said the name of it, is called Revelation. And again, these colors, the reds and the oranges, just pop. You can also combine this with... something from that. This napkin, oh, the plies are coming off, but that's okay. This one is called Sky Dance Wolf Song. We've got the, you know, Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, and I love the teal, the purple color scheme. So you could, let's forget about the focal image right now, with the wolves, I believe. Yeah, Wolf Song. You can ha use the colors here. Start, put that on a master board. Have a swoop on a page with other, other elements with that purple and teal. Then, of course, you have the focal image. This, if you love this, let's see if this works for a nap there. Wouldn't that make a nice coaster? And you can position it. I like it right there. So that would work on there. I've done these on the front of Art uh, Journal. Three by five. I like that a little better. You get the swoop of the sky. So that's Sky Dance Wolf Song. This one, whoops, is called Caribou. Caribou Winter. And I wasn't exactly excited about the caribou, not gonna lie. Love the navy and the blue background. But, you know, if you like this, this does make for a nice vignette. This is a five by seven. If that's your thing, that will work for you. This could be on an art journal page. You could have, I could put several caribous. I can cut out this one and that one I can have, you know, make three going across the page. And you've seen me doing that. So, like I said, my first instinct of this one was to not use it. But then, looking for elements that I can use. I have it here in my stash. Look at that. Wouldn't that make an interesting pattern, motif, design on an art journal page? So I'd maybe put that through the middle or the top and the bottom for a border on a larger Like I put it here, it almost looks like icicles. And then up here. So again, with this one, if you want, you can use the caribou for whatever purpose that you want. If you have an idea for a page and that's your thing. And then use the other parts. Yeah, I totally am going to use that at the top. And this reads very wintry to me but it doesn't have to be. Then I can worry about the centerpiece. As I've said before, the goal is to use our napkins. Honor them by using them. And the last one, this one is called Mother and Moon. 
again, love the color scheme, the blues and the purples. This is like dioxazine purple here. Love the dot pattern so I can steal that idea, borrow that idea, do some of that in my artwork. This would make, you know, a lovely Mother's Day card because we've got mother and child here. This is for a composition book. Maybe a coaster or a magnet with a sentiment. You could put this on a, I would even just, after I did use the mother and child, I might just cut and use this patterning here or this piece. So go get out your napkins, get out your substrates, make yourself some window templates, grab the post-it notes, and brainstorm ideas for ways that you can use the napkins in your stash. Join my Facebook group, tag me if you post your napkin creations, I'd love to see them.